I want to be able to turn off my phone for a week or two weeks and know the business is running without me because I'm no longer an operator. I'm actually now an owner. Tonight's show is about mind and body. Again, some of the key touch points we're going to discuss. How both play a key role for success in business. Working out challenges and risks to build a better future. Strategies to go further in business. With that intro, a very warm welcome, Isaac Bardos. Welcome to Mind Your Business. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's great to be here with you. Amazing. So, for what you're willing to share, tell us a little bit about your journey, your background. <laughs> it's been quite a journey. So I'm sorry to add that for what you're willing to share, but those <laughs> that follow you on LinkedIn, hey, he's, he's a very open guy. I share quite a bit. <laughs> I definitely, my perspective is that um, if you want people to open up and really expand what they're doing in their own business, their own life, and take the next level, that, that next step, which requires them to step outside their comfort zone and be a little vulnerable in doing that, that if you're going to ask the people to do that, you need to go first. Because I really believe that one of the key characteristics of leaders, especially in the business space, is you need to be willing to do whatever you're going to ask someone else to do, but be willing to go first before you have other people and you expect other people to do that. So. And I think that showing up and being vulnerable and being really honest about, hey, life is a journey. And, you know, if you keep comparing someone's highlight reel to your behind the scenes reel, you're always going to be feeling like um, there's a saying, comparison is the thief of joy. So you're always going to be feeling like you're you're in a space emotionally where you're not you're not feeling at your best. And when I'm honest, when I'm vulnerable, what's amazing is people message me and they say, you know, it's so courageous of you to post that. And I think to myself, it's even more courageous for you to live your life day in, day out, trying to have one facade, but knowing that your reality is something different. That's really courageous because that's that's really hard. It's much easier because as soon as I share something, I'm free from it. It no longer owns me because it's like, okay, here it is. I release it. And when I know that other people are aware of it, it actually allows them permission to see what's not yet working in their life. And that's really, I mean, that's that's the definition of innovation. It's looking at what's not yet working and how do we make it the way that we, we want it to and trial and error and testing. And that's, that's what innovation is. And that's one of the keys in business is one of the keys in life. So being vulnerable ties into so many key parts. And that's one of the reasons why it's a value of mine and uh, sharing things more publicly, you know, as I can. Incredible. So um, my background, my journey, well, so I was from a young age, I definitely would say that I had a, my fair share of challenges. Um, my parents were divorced before I could walk and they were married to new people before I could talk. So you know, I ended up being the middle child of nine, which um, I didn't really have middle child syndrome, but I definitely wanted, you know, more time, more attention, more, uh, more interactions with those that I loved. And in learning how to be able to fulfill my own needs, how to fill myself up instead of expecting other people and other things to fill me up, I had to find ways to find the resources to make sure that I have my own needs taken care of. And I think that most children nowadays are, are struggling to figure out who they are, how to, how to fulfill their own needs, what their own needs are, and how they fit into the bigger picture of who they are in school, who they are in the family setting. Who, and then they grow up to be adults because I think adults are basically overage children. And um, the same things that we're, not, that we're not taking care of or addressed in the younger years end up just showing up in, a, in an adult setting, an adult format, and being in the workplace as an employee, a manager, a leader. And very often business leaders see that their their employees are still on their journey because if there's unresolved things from the past, it you know they walk in Monday at nine a.m. It's walking in with them, and being able to recognize that is a, is a really key part. So sharing my own journey helps me become more aware of it. Um, helping other people be aware of my journey helps them see that hey, he was the kid that no one thought would make it. You know, he was he was the little kid that couldn't. And when people set the expectation for you, if you if you hold on to their expectation of you, then that becomes the the DNA. It becomes the blueprint of where you're going to go in life. So my journey, I would say, you know, after after the the initial challenge with divorce, um, or coming from what they call back in the day a broken home, and I was one of the few kids in my school. So my identity was I come from a broken home, which means I saw myself as already like a step behind of most of my peers. I wasn't as good as, and so I chased trying to be more, you know, being enough and trying to prove that I was enough and it's so freeing when you get to the other side of that and you're no longer trying to prove yourself. You're no longer trying to catch up as if you're not enough because of something that I had no control over. And um, when I was, by the time I got to school, I got basically, I got kicked out of every school that I went to, mm -hmm. except for when I switched from 
uh, the private Orthodox school system to the public school system. Public school is the first time I ever thrived in uh, in a school setting in my K through 12 years. But literally five different schools, you know, from kindergarten, um, elementary school, middle school, high school. It wasn't that I was a, it wasn't a, a bad kid doing bad things that were just, you know, there was no way to fix that. It was that I wasn't a fit because what I was looking for and who I was and how I was trying to break through my shell and discover myself, it was it was in conflict with the kind of in the box system that I was I was sent in in those schools. And so when I finally found ways to be able to express myself in a more, you know, exploring who I am, what I want, what are my needs, how, how can I show up the best way, which is by the way, what entrepreneurs do in the okay. business world. And that's what we want to get to, yeah. Right. But when you're a kid, it's like it's a bad thing. But in the entrepreneur world, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. So I started my first business when I was 18. Okay. And I never I didn't really see it as a business, but I basically asked myself a series of questions. I asked myself, how can I make the most money with the least amount of investment, with the least amount of risk, and in a way where I could scale it up as off as much as I want and do more hours and make more money, or scale it down when I want to go to school or I want to travel mm -hmm. and have it not impact it. And if I'm 18 years old, what can I offer something that would be the highest paying amount of money for the for the given experience that I bring to the table. And so I asked myself a series of questions. Then I asked myself, well, what is it that people would really pay me to do? Right. What would people pay me to do? And how could I get them to pay me at the highest level for that? Where they would, where basically they would be convinced that I could really deliver whatever it is for them. Right. And so at this point, it wasn't a product-based business. It was a service-based business. And what I found was very often those answers to the questions are in the questions that people are already asking, the feedback I was already getting. And so in high school, I, I, I was a multi-sport athlete in high school and actually multi-sport NCAA athlete back wow. later in college. Nice. And people would often ask me, you know, how can I lose weight? Because I saw I was in very good shape because I took care of my body. Right. And I started, you know, getting the sense that people were, people would even say to me in joking, hey, if I give you 10 pounds, what's the, what's the cost per pound for you to lose that weight for me? <laughs> right. Because you run it off for me. And that's kind of how it evolved into the personal training because I realized if I'm taking care of my body and I have all this information, I'm hungry to know already about nutrition and what's in each food and, and how to take care of your body and the different ways that um, people can can really shift the the physique that they have into something they feel really confident and proud of and energized by. Mm -hmm. I realized that many people struggle with energy and they struggle with feeling confident about that. They struggle with balancing all the demands of their life and taking care of this health part, which without health, it's like... All the wealth in the world doesn't make a difference. So Isaac, I'm just going to jump in here yeah. because your event coming up, are you going to touch on those type of subjects? <laughs> yeah. I just got to jump in because that's on everyone's mind. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, a huge part of of our ability to succeed as business owners is in your energy. If you Your energy is your number one greatest resource because a day that a person feels like they don't have a lot of energy is going to show up as a very different day than a day when they feel like they are full of energy, they're charged, they're confident, they're feeling alive. Because in the second one where they're feeling alive, anything's possible. There's no challenge that they can't overcome because they know they have the, the energy, the momentum, that power to, to really overcome whatever it takes. But a person who's not feeling that they have a lot of energy, you know, energy is what creates more of something else. So any creation, any problem solving always starts with what's your level of energy? And if the level, if the level of resistance, the challenge, whether that's an employee or it's the marketplace or it's a client or customer that is giving you a certain level of resistance, that resistance is a certain amount of energy. If you don't have enough energy, which is to overcome that, if you don't have enough, whether the energy shows up as confidence or clarity or lightness, being able to just not be owned by the situation, if you don't have energy that can that can supersede that, then that situation will always stress you out, weigh you down. So teaching people the foundation of one of the things that's very unique about our event is it all starts with your energy. And teaching people how to get into a physical state, an emotional state where they feel unstoppable and they know with absolute certainty that no matter what is going to show up that day, they can really, they will overcome it. But they're also what we call HILA. HILA stands for high intention, low attachment, which means that they go in with the energy knowing that there's such a clear intention about exactly what they're going to do. And with that very clear, confident intention, they're not even paying attention to the things that are the doubts, the fears, the hesitations, the what ifs. They're being smart about calculated risk and strategic risk, okay. but they're also looking at it from a place of this is going to work out, but there's also low attachment to exactly how it's going to work out. Because mm. when you're clear about the destination, but you're flexible with the, the route to get there, it becomes a lot less stressful. 
right? The reason why traffic can be stressful is because we think this is the route I'm supposed to take. This is the time I'm supposed to be there. But really, if the destination is, let's say, be here at 10 o'clock, if you're okay with with knowing that, listen, if I get there at 10.05, right. you know, it's it's important. Obviously, it's a, if it's a flight, you got to you gotta be there. So you got to strategize. But knowing that I can't, I'm doing everything that I can and I have high intention and I'm really setting myself for to, up to, to be successful here. Mm-hmm. And then there's a traffic jam and then the road's closed. There's a detour, whatever it is, which all these things show up in business too. Then when you have the right energy, you have the right, your, your, your mind and body are clear. They're aligned for, for setting you up to win. Then you can overcome whatever obstacle shows up because it doesn't doesn't now control you. And that's the f- one of the foundational pieces is we get people into a place where they feel they're in a state where they they really do feel unstoppable. And they feel that there's a there's a excitement and a joy and a knowing, a knowing in their body and their in their heart that they will, right? So there's this clear intention, a high level of intention with that that vision that's very front of mind and front of heart for them. But there's also low attachment to trying to make things happen the way that they think, which is where micromanaging and stress and conflict come in, where there's also expectations that that seem, seem to butt heads in business and create a lot of uh, tension and problems. Incredible. And these are the type of this, uh, discussions and presenters that are going to be at your Scaling to Freedom event. Please just tell us about it. It's going to be in Miami. So it's a great time to be in Florida, you know, and one of the reasons we do that, by the way, is because when you leave your typical day to day physical space and you move into a different physical space, it opens up the mind. Right. So when a person, for example, even if a person lives in Florida or let's say they live in, you know, New York, the second they land in Florida or the second they they walk out of their Florida home or office and they walk into the ocean or they walk up and they're looking at a beautiful field of palm trees it opens up the mind immediately because it actually shifts their state. It shifts their focus and it shifts what they're telling themselves about the situation that they're in, right? All the paperwork in in the office suddenly dissipates when they step off that plane and they see the palm trees and the breeze and the clear blue skies and it's sunny and they go, gosh, when I got on the plane, it was 37. When I got off the plane, it was 73, (laughs) right? So we, we get them into a place where we're setting them up for success and being in a great state. And the presenters that we're bringing in are among the best in the world that I found and people who've really inspired me because they've had real results in real world experience, life situations. It's not that they have inspirational ideas or they have, you know, big fancy things that, um, that they, that they preach. It's that they, they've done the work behind the scenes, which is why they've created the results in the real world. And, uh, the first one I'm really excited about is Mark Bodner. Yeah. And, you know, he, he doesn't need an introduction from me. he, one of the things that really blew my mind is when um, he shared with me that he he joined his company and there was maybe a dozen or so employees, maybe about 12 employees when right. he first joined the company. And now that company scaled under his leadership to over 1,200. Yeah. And a lot of the people coming to this event want to know, well, how do you scale a company from 12 to 1,200? Because at any given moment, one of those 1,200 people, what are the chances one of them is messing up? What are the chances one of them is dropping the ball? What are the chances that... There's things that are high stakes that really matter because he's working at his company, just things that really matter right. that they might be doing something that what if, you know, what if it's going wrong, but you can't live a life. You can't lead a company, especially in today's economy with that kind of mindset. So you need systems, you need team, you need operations, you need to have processes in place to make people maximally focused and productive, but also have the accountability to make them realize, Hey, What's the next level? And they're always growing to bring the company, their selves, and their performance to the next level. And for the small business owner who has 12 people, that those are the, those are the tickets to go from 12 to 1,200. But the 12, the person who has 12 or even 120 business owners, who this event is really for that smaller mm-hmm. business owners who are really looking to get bigger mm-hmm. or looking to scale, they need to know, how do I let go? How do I let go of trying to juggle all the balls all at once, right? right? Because to be the CEO successful way that Mark has been, is you can't be the chief everything officer. Right. Or in many cases, my clients are the chief, the CEO, the chief extinguishing officer, <laughs> where they're constantly putting out fires. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't put out every can't fire. That's not your way. job. It's you can't impossible. scale. And that's one of the things that I'm really excited for him to come and share in person. And what I'm, what I'm super excited about is that very often people like Mark, who have such incredible real world wisdom, they often sacrifice the things that are most important to them in order to achieve in business. And one of the things I really value and respect about what Mark does is 
you know, he still learns, you know, Tori still studies Talmud on a daily basis. That's a real priority. You know, he, he carves out time to spend time with his kids. He's got grandkids and multiple grandkids. And so he values that family, but his phone is also off at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Right. Or maybe before that, meaning his phone's off, he's going to sleep at 10. And so his, that, that time management piece, that work-life balance, he, he's really struck a balance where you can lead. And most people think that in order to scale a business, it means they have to sacrifice more time and pull that away from the people that they love most and pull that away from their own health. Meaning in order for me to have a greater success here, I have to withdraw from the things that are most important to me. That's right. And so they, they have these values and conflict, which is very difficult for them to overcome, which is why they never make the moves and make the decisions to move forward. That's one of the reasons. So Mark is one example. A second one I'm super excited about is Charlie Harari. Yeah. And I've been so moved by him for one of the main reasons is because if you really listen to what he's saying when he tells, when he delivers content that is, you know, either based on the Torah or based based on uh, different stories that he's shared, it's all based on Torah. Um, it, it's it shows that he has done the inner work. He's done the inner personal growth, the inner personal development, and as a business leader, those who do the inner work get the outer results. It always works that way. You want to see an ROI? It's a return on inner investment. That's where it starts. Incredible. And having someone who's done that work, but most people know in, in terms of the content of personal development or maybe religious content, he's coming to actually share the business side, right? And the practical business things because he's, he's the CEO of a real estate company. And that I think that's incredible value because for someone who has so much demands on his time as well, and also has the value of, of learning Torah, and also has the value on a daily basis, and also the value of personal growth and bettering himself, but also being there for family and striking that balance, those are all things that people want to know how. How do you really do that? And that's why that's one of the main topics is if you're going to scale your business, it's not so just like, oh, now I have more money and I'm just as busy. All right, now I can spend more hours in the office. It's so that I can free up my time to do either if I want a second business, great. Maybe I want to learn it every morning. Maybe I want to study. Maybe I want to go on vacations. I want to take, I want to be able to turn off my phone for a week or two weeks and know the business is running without me because I'm no longer an operator. I'm actually now an owner. And these men have done it. These leaders have done it. And there are many, plenty of women all, who have also done it and plenty of women who are coming to this event Amazing. who are looking to really find that, that balance and the strategy and what are the ways to really do this? And we try to, we want it to be very hands-on and practical workshop style where people are coming out with a very clear practical plan that from the second that they learn it that day, they can implement it. And at our last event, we had people literally during lunch break making phone calls to either clients or customers or people in their team or maybe an investor and saying, let's move forward. They're already taking action at the event. So their breakthroughs were happening before they even got on the plane to go home. They had already had breakthroughs and momentum that was fresh momentum to help them get to the next level. What is the website that they could find out more information about the event? So it's isaacbardos.com slash event or scalingtofreedom.com. And my guest is none other than Isaac Bardos. We wanted to have him on for a while, and Mark Bodner made it happen. Of course, Mark Bodner is going to be headlining at Isaac's upcoming event, but I still have so much to ask of Isaac. And there's only, I don't know, a half hour left, give or take. And like, how are we going to get it all in? Somehow we will. But for those that are going to be at the event, oh, two and a half days, practically a three-day event, um, there you'll get the full experience. And we'll discuss that soon. But to find out more information about the event, scalingtofreedom.com, scalingtofreedom.com. Isaac, thank you so much for joining us here in studio yeah. in Brooklyn, New York. Welcome to Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank I know you. it's going to be in sunny Florida, but hey, don't diss Brooklyn. Brooklyn is great also. It's okay. good to be here. <laughs> and it makes me appreciate Florida weather more. <laughs> All right, he had to disbrook. All right. <laughs> well, Isaac, okay, that in the parking, to be honest. Isaac, let me ask you as follows. You are a coach for entrepreneurs and pe people I, people that lead businesses. Of, I imagine businesses of one and businesses of people that, ha of, of, that have a team of over 1,000, maybe even 5,000 or 10,000. You mentioned over you know, many different countries, four different continents. As a business coach, you know, there's, there, there, I mean, there's so many questions that are that I that I that I want to ask, but like, you know, you, you're you're like, you're got to be a psychologist. 
You have to know how to package information. I guess, you know, I'm going to ask this question. It's a bit of a delicate question, but it's something you deal with on a regular basis. And I imagine it's going to be discussed at the event. What happens when you're engaging with a new client and you're, you're, you're viewing the full landscape and there's some pain points that are become, that are clear to you and you have to share it with the person, but you don't know how they're going to take it. <clears throat> and yeah. you got to share real world stuff because you want to, you want to solve the problems, but are they going to really be open to listening to me? Is that is that a fair question to ask you? So, sure. I mean, everything's fair game. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. It's <laughs> uh, a tough one. Can you clarify what exactly you're wondering? Well, I mean, if you're talking with a CEO and you get him to open up, right? He's got to be transparent and talk about the good, bad, and the ugly, right? He's got to share yeah. everything. Okay. And, you know... They're sharing stuff, and you realize that maybe the CEO is, I don't want to say part of the problem, but you're going to have to you know, share stuff, and he may not be that excited to hear it. I, I mean, <laughs> it's happened many times before. Okay. Yeah. How do you approach something? It's, it's a funny question, so I should just clarify. Most of my clients are really from startups to 250 to 300 employees. So they're in the kind of small business category, but you know, a business that has two to three hundred people is not so small. All right. But it's it's categorized in the small business. All right. And um, one of the reasons I do that is because there's less red tape in the smaller companies, so impact and change your results can happen sooner. Generally speaking. Right. So, very <laughs> sometimes in the larger companies where there's partners or there's multiple leaders. One of the reasons they bring me in is what they, they call to bring me in as as the guy that can that can say the things and have the conversations that are very difficult conversations. And instead of doing that, what I do is I teach them how to have the difficult conversations. Because right, this, the old saying is, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for the day. And if you teach a man a fish, he can right. eat for a lifetime. Right. But if you teach a man to fish and then you teach him the skill of how to teach other men to fish, then you can teach him how to support a village. So a leader of a business, a leader of a company you want to teach them how to teach others to be leaders. And the first step is very often someone in that position is concerned about holding that position, maintaining that position. Because right. you know, there's the chairman, there's the board, perhaps there's other investors. There's people that the CEO even has to answer to, answer to or even the COO has to answer to. And everyone has different expectations and pressures. Right. But when, when my approach comes to the table is... When I bring my approach to the table, it's that I'm willing to say something that's more honest and more direct than some other people have been willing to say to them. Because I really truly believe that the truth will set you free. And very often, one of the reasons why people are stuck in certain business situations, really any situations, is because they're not fully honest about what is the real truth about the situation. How am I, and, and we also, as individuals, we never fully see the full truth we see our side of the truth, right? So I walk into a company and it's this person and that person are not seeing eye to eye or there's you know this company versus that client. There's an issue. Well, there's always three sides to the story. There's their side, their side, and the true side, right? <laughs> so helping helping a company, you know, by working with the, with the the leader, first of all, be able to see okay, what's the real truth? And if the problem is, so to speak, that person, it's not that the person is problematic. It's there's a perspective or a process. That's problematic. And so you never demonize the individual. What you do is you you help focus in on what is specifically the issue. And then what you do is you help the person kind of dis, disconnect from like that being their issue. Like, this is my idea. This is my process. Because they're very proud of it. So they're always going to defend it because they think that their value, their worth, their authority is on the line when you're trying to take that away from them. So instead of trying to take that away from them, have them look at it as if you're just putting it on the middle of the table, right? Like a deck of cards, you know, someone's playing a poker game. Right. You put the cards on the table. People aren't possessive about, oh, those are my cards. You're just putting in the table and you're saying, let's now look at this in an objective way. Because if it's not mine, it's just an idea, then you're willing to to look at it in a way where you can say, okay, I'm willing to let go of it. Or I'm willing to modify it. I'm willing to take other people's perspectives. And so that's one thing is disassociating from the ownership of the idea of it. Another thing is helping le leaders be able to look at it and say, well, what if this does, what if I let go of this or what if I give in or what if this does go wrong for whatever reason I'm fearing and really walk them down that path? Because when there's a conflict or when there's stress, if you walk me through, if, if we walk down the path of where that stress is going, it'll show me your greatest fears. 
And as soon as I can see your greatest fears, I'm going to know what are the foundational ways that you're making almost all decisions that you have that are creating that stress for you and and the domino effect of everyone else in your company. Yeah. <clears throat> so we want to be able to release that fear, but we can't release it if we're not aware of what it is. And so very often a, a business that's struggling from the leadership side is because there's a there's a mindset, a belief, a decision that was made that the person's not even fully aware of. Mm. And they're acting right now as like emergency breaks mm. where it's slowing them down from being able to see another perspective, from being able to weigh all the factors more objectively, from being able to give someone the go ahead or, or give someone the let go ahead, right? If you have to, or the decision even to hire because there's a fear. There's, there's something that is what if it does work out or what if it doesn't work out? And then they're already seeing the eventual outcome in their mind. And so very often it's not a strategy in terms of what they need to change. It's the way that they're approaching the strategy that needs to change. And it's never the person that's wrong. It's just the process, the way and the approach that they're using that's not serving them and might have helped them get to where they are today. And that's really important. Very often way, the way we do things, especially the way that a person became that leader is they didn't wake up and 18 years old joined the company as a CEO, right? We're talking about someone that worked their way there and they feel it was earned and it was earned. But what was working for them up until now, if that's no longer serving them, then it's now actually not only serving them, not serving them, it's actually hurting them. It's harming them and their interests and helping them be able to see that, that them continuing down that same path is actually self-sabotaging mm. is one of the easiest ways for people to go, yeah, I don't want to keep doing that. I want to keep shooting myself in the foot. Now, <clears throat> you talk about this, you write about this, the five pillars to success. And I imagine this is going to be a foundational aspect to the Scaling to Freedom event. Yeah. Could you address the five principles. Yeah. So there's there's a system to what we're doing. Okay. And the reason why we use this system is because it works across the board and it works across industries. Because these are universal principles that we have found a way to make people pers- help people personalize. So even though there's going to be a group there, everyone has individual things that they're coming for, right. but they're all under one of these five categories, one of these five pillars of scaling a, a business mm-hmm. and operating a business, which we're trying to help them become not operators. But this, these, these five pillars, this system is whenever something does go wrong, it, you just look at it like, okay, which one of these five is it? Mm-hmm. Where's the category of it? Which bucket in the business is, is the problematic issue? And then you can, you can hone in like a, like diagnosis. You can figure out what's the problem. And then from there, you can figure out what's the prognosis. How long is it going to take? What's involved? So you already have the remedy for whatever issue you're facing when you understand this five pillar system. And During the course of day one, day two, and day three, we're going to go through each one of these five more in depth and teaching people, okay, and sometimes you have the leadership that needs to work on, let's say, pillars one and three or one and four, and you have other people under the leadership Mm -hmm. that need to work on pillars two and three. And then you have the financial team that needs to work on pillar four and five. So the leaders need to understand all five pillars because they need to understand who needs to be doing what in what way in order for us to scale this business. Amazing. What are the five? What are the five? So the first one is called mindset mastery, right? Everything that we do, every decision that we make is all based upon the foundation of how we see the world and understanding our inner world, becoming self-aware of our beliefs, our thoughts, the story that we have around uh, our successes, how we got there, the things that need to happen, the fears that hold us back, or maybe they're they're trying to guide us because we don't see fear as a negative thing. We see fear as something that's fueling us either to move forward or move away from something. Right. So becoming aware of What's kind of the, the the emotional DNA behind why we're doing what we're doing and what it is that's that's either motivating us to move forward or to move away from something mm-hmm. helps us become aware of ourselves, but also helps us become aware of that for the people that we are working with. Right. And inside of Mindset Mastery is also motivating employees and creating accountability and having the, the courage and the confidence to do things. And most business owners today, most entrepreneurs grew up in a system in a world that believes that in order for you to have to, to be confident in doing something, you need competence. Meaning you need to have years of experience or several experiences under your belt or a degree or whatever it is in order for you to be confident that you can do it. Okay. But that's actually totally false. Hmm. I see it the absolute opposite way because everything that you're doing now, at one point for you to have done it, you had to at one point have never done it before. True. Right? So the very first major thing that any person has done right. is learning how to walk. 
Well, you had zero competence when you f- first took those steps, <laughs> right? So if people needed confidence in being able to walk, and they were constantly waiting for, sorry, if they needed competence right. in being able to walk, they They'd never they would never walk. They'd wait to get a degree in learning how to walk, <laughs> right? But thank God, ninety something percent of the world knows how to walk, right. because even when they didn't, they weren't com- they were confident. Like I can do this, right? right. Now, by the way, it's it's a it's a baby, it's a child confidence because they don't know that they can't. Right. And we need to help business owners and leaders realize, well, who says you can't? That's great. Because when it's at the next level in business, we're assuming all the reasons based upon information or things we saw on social media, things that our grandfather said That hold you back. That hold you back. So going back to that toddler level confidence of like, well, who says I can't, right? That unstoppable confidence is, is mindset mastery. So that's just a summary of it. The second part is marketing mastery. Once, once you're clear about what you can, what you're really going to bring to the world or to your to your market, you have to understand exactly how to communicate that to attract the attention of the relevant and interested people, right. and from that you need to bring them from cold to sold, right? To so getting their attention and getting the the intention of them actually wanting to work with you, not just getting attention. Right. It's getting them their attention with intention to work together. Right. And then moving them down that, that so to speak, that marketing funnel, which we have kind of the opposite version of a marketing funnel that most, we kind of flipped it on its head. Great. And then bring them to pillar number three, which is what we call sales DAS. So DAS is, is kind of the term that we use, you know, I grew up in the religious world of real wisdom, real wisdom of understanding things in, in a profound way is DAS. And it's the Hebrew word for, for knowledge or wisdom. So having sales DAS is basically, DAS stands for D-A-S, disturb, agitate, and solve. And- that's not a concept I came up with. I'm just connecting it in, in terms of the five pillar system. Disturb is the first step of, of a sale. People have to be dissatisfied with status quo and then feel that that has to go. It can no longer stay the same way. And at that point, they hit a threshold where they're no longer willing to keep things the way that it's going. There's a necessity, there's a hunger, there's a drive. And that's, by the way, why we created this event for people who realize, I don't want to keep going the way that I'm going. It's not sustainable. It's not the way that I want to grow. It's not the way I want to live. It's not the quality of life that I signed up for. I thought it would be more like this, but then in actuality, my business and my lifestyle as a result is more like this. So disturb is the first step. People have to be disturbed. Getting when someone's angry or upset, not not angry, but someone's really frustrated, they're right. unhappy with, right. that's actually a great moment. If, you, if they're confused, it's actually a great moment because a confusion means that there's two different things that they're trying to believe at the same time that you can't believe are both true. And at that moment, they're at the cusp of a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. If someone's if someone's agitated or they're frustrated about something because you've disturbed them, you've brought it up, you've right. you, you know that 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 sunburn, you've yeah. you've agitated, they're ready they're ready to buy whatever aloe you have to offer That's them. Right. That's right. That and it's not manipulative. All you're doing is you're highlighting here's what's not working, which is what brought you here to solve, which is the third step, which is the S, the D A N S, disturb, agitate, and solve. The fourth pillar is is the the processes, people, and productivity, yeah. right? So we call it the P pillar, because once you have the the mindset that you need, and you've mastered that, you have the clients or the the customers coming in, and you have the three lead gen sources, which is one of the things we talk about is having three sources of lead generation that are working on behalf of your business, rather than you constantly chasing and trying to follow up with, and they're quality, but they're not quality. They close, they don't close. Are they closing? Will they close? And then you have the sales systems set up and there's systems for sales, right? There's a science to sales. There's, mm-hmm. a, there's an art to marketing, but there's a science to sales. Yeah. And once those things are set up, you need the operations to be able to deliver on those sales, to onboard, to deliver the process or the product or the service, or and being able to offboard those clients in a way that then is now serving the ability for you to move to pillar number five, which is having the finances that you need and knowing the numbers, knowing the, the, the numbers really well. And most small business owners, they don't know their numbers. Right. Very often I'll be like, what I'll ask them some specific questions. And there's five to eight numbers that a business owner needs to have. The same way that if someone goes to the doctor's office, there's three or four numbers they need to know for their vital signs. Well, there are vital signs to be able to measure what's the health of a business. Right? What are what are certain numbers? So we're going to go into that. But in order to know those numbers, you that the financial wherewithal of knowing these numbers, not how to calculate everything. You can have your financial team doing that. But knowing what your numbers are gives you a pulse on that. That allows you to understand the other part of pillar number five, which is scaling systems. And once you know the scoreboard, right? It's like you go to a sports game, there's no scoreboard. You don't know how many innings, you don't know how many outs, you don't know who's on base, you don't know how many runs have been scored. It's like there's no there's no skin in the game because you, you can't even participate in right. like where are things at? What's the status? Right. And part of the drive that comes is 
knowing those numbers. Just like when you're looking at the scoreboard, you get excited. The crowd goes crazy based upon if the numbers are really close, can we make it, can we not? And so those numbers are very often um, what determines how scalable the company is versus is it just in survival mode rather than scalable mode. Isaac, before we go to a commercial break, how could people find out more about your incredible upcoming event? So scalingtofreedom.com, and that'll bring you to our website, isaacbardos.com, which you can learn more about me and what we have to do, but scalingtofreedom.com. Yeah, cool. we got around, whoa, we're running close to the end of the show. However, there's still so much to talk about with Isaac. <laughs> So in this last segment, I'm going to go straight to, uh, as I say, cut the chase. Isaac, first of all, again, thank you so much for joining me here in studio, here in New York. Yes, welcome to New to York, the Big Apple. <laughs> okay. Welcome that, okay. You have an event coming up. We've been talking about it for the first uh, couple of segments of tonight's show. Uh, coming up in Florida, late February 2023. I, if I may put you on the spot, there are all types of events that go on throughout the year in different locations, different venues, different speakers. What sets your event apart? And part of my question is, I've heard, you know, you've, you've talked about mind and body. We know that uh, that's a uh, work-life balance is a big uh, buzzword these days. What sets your event apart? Great question. So the goal of the event is to create lasting change. And... I created the the structure of the event based upon the experiences I had at other business events okay. that were very, very different in that when I, you know, I feel really good in the moment and you're, you know, there's energy, there's excitement, there's networking, and there are some impressive speakers that get on stage and you hear sound bites from them. Right. You know, you hear a panel, uh, there's a few questions, but they're not really accessible. They're not really there f to help you. So you basically get a few quotes, maybe a few ideas, but it's nothing that's real, real meat that you can take and apply and run with and change your business. And very often I found that books also, people get ideas from books, but it's not enough for you to really, when, when you look, okay, well, what, how do I really change things? How do I create some lasting, significant shifts in my business in order to really skyrocket things? There's not enough in there because... The, that's not the purpose of the book or that's not the purpose of the other event. The other event is just sharing a few ideas. So the promise of an, of, a, of most events is, hey, you're going to grow your sales. You're going to figure out how to be a better owner, leader, manager, whatever it is, mm -hmm. or you're going to learn marketing. But this event is about creating lasting change. And the person, so one person is going to be coming because they need better things in marketing. One person might be coming because they need better operations or because they don't realize it, but their mindset needs to shift because they have a lot of really good things going for them in the other four pillars. But Creating lasting change starts with building momentum, building a powerful momentum to help them break through. And building that powerful momentum starts with getting people into a state where they feel emotionally strong, right? Most people are not emotionally fit. They're emotionally weak, which is why they have these fears, is why they have these stress and it shows up in their life, their body, their business. And so we actually get them into a place in their body where they're feeling so strong, so powerful. And we use all kinds of innovative approaches that are very, very interactive, which is the second thing. Most events that people go to are very passive, right? When there's a lecture or there's a, there's a uh, panel, there's, which by the way, we don't have any panels, right? There's no lectures. Every, every training is set up to be not just a speech, but it's a training so that people, when they come in at the beginning of hearing that presenter, that trainer come in, which by the way, they're not, they're not coming in to give a, their spiel, mm -hmm. their 60 minute thing. And here's the stories and here's a few bullet points, a few slides, and they walk out and before you, before you turn back to the stage, they're gone. The people are, who are coming as guest presenters, including myself, they're there for a chunk of time and they're there to interact, answer questions, give practical things that can really help shift in creating that clear practical plan that people need to scale their business while freeing up their time. Right. So the, the type of the, the, the presentations is not passive. It's not where you sit back and you wait for the person to talk at you. I mean, I could barely sit through six minutes of that. <laughs> right. So I'm not going to ask people to sit through that for two and a half days. It's interactive. So every 20 to 30 minutes, people are getting up and they're using their body, they're using their energy to get, keep their energy in a top state. Because if you, if you hear something, you retain a small percentage of it. Right. If you write it down while you're hearing it, you'll remember a little bit more, but if you actually re recall it, like there's an, it's memorized in the body, memorized where you feel it, there's an emotional connection to it. Then you'll remember it very, very well. Right? So a person's most pivotal moments in their life, they remember they can play the video in HD quality in their mind because there was, there was something they felt in their body rather than just they saw something once or they heard something once. So we actually, the, the way that we help people 
take in the content and process that is not passive. It's so incredibly like it's ingrained in them. They feel it. And where we condition them to feel more powerful, more confident, more clear. And it's the content itself is also not fluff. It's highly practical content. Now there's going to be a lot of like helping people really feel energized because when a person has a lot of stresses and challenges, it naturally will deflate the person unless they know how to constantly get themselves back to that place of confidence and clarity and energy. Uh, something else is very unique is in addition to no panels, you know, there's no booths. It's not like you walk around and just kind of window shop booths. We don't have booths. This is a intensive workshop for people who want to come and be immersive in it. So for example, if you want to learn Spanish, then you could either go online and get an app and take a few lessons, or you can move to Spain for two weeks, right? Which one are you, you going to really learn the language, the culture, the nuances? You're going to live and breathe it. So we created an immersive event that's that people have to leave their day to day instead of like getting tidbits, which is what people get when they go to a few hours of a seminar and hear 30 minutes here and 20 minutes there and have some networking conversations there. And those are all, those are good because they kind of, they give us a little bit of juice. But two days later, after I would come back from those events, I sit back at my office desk and it was the same, oh, what is it that needs to be doing? And it's the same to-do list. Like things didn't really change. I had a stack of people to follow up with, but most of those deals didn't close. I was just hopeful that they would. And so this event is not about, there's actually no formal networking because when people go to a networking event, they have to show up as the expert. Right. They have to be the best, the best. They have to be the greatest. Right. When you show up at this event, this event is not about networking. I mean, people will do networking and at the last event, three businesses were started at our last event. Wow. Just from the small, you know, getting to know each other, having meals together, that immersiveness of like, we're in this journey together. We're in this breakthrough together. We're in this supportive environment and what happens in the room stays in the room together. And the fact that when people come, they don't have to be the expert is amazing because this is the room where you cannot be the expert and all the things that are not your, where, how they need to be in your business. This is the place for you to come solve them. And that is one of the greatest ROIs because right next to you might be sitting someone who you, you look up to because they're a celebrity name. But that person, you realize like there's so many things that I'm learning from one another, the things that they say when we're doing an exercise and sharing and interacting, you realize I never thought about it that way. Or you hear someone's question, you realize I had the same question and you realize I had that question. So you're learning from one another in a way where people get to, to hear perspectives and hear what's going on behind the scenes in other businesses and it helps them kind of recalibrate what's normal for them and help them realize that I can really get to the next level and now I have a clear plan how and I'm in this supportive environment that gives me that energy for that momentum I need to break through and implement the practical actionable steps I'm learning here to have that lasting change. And we're going to have follow-ups afterwards too for people to have opportunities to continue that lasting change, that momentum they need. Incredible. We have one minute left. Isaac, the website, how can people find out more information about this awesome event? It's in Miami, scaling to to freedom.com, scaling to freedom.com. And, you know, right now, obviously we have, uh, we still have an early bird going on just for the next bit of time, but, you know, it is, our last event sold out within two weeks of opening up the ticket sales. Amazing. So, this we're, we're confident this event is going to sell out because the value is so high and so many people need this and no one else in the space, at least in the coaching space, does this targeting Orthodox business owners who have the work-life balance they're trying to figure out and all the many things or responsibilities that are pulling at them. And by the way, all the reasons why people can't come or say they can't come, the, the kids, they have to ask their spouse, they have to be at work. Those are all the reasons, all the reasons they can't are the reasons that they must. Because they got into business to help their kids. They got in business to be supportive uh, for their spouse and their family. They got into business to be able to run a an operation that that is not them running the operation, but starts to run by itself so they can be there for the family. They can be there for their, their, their kids. They can be present, whether for me, it was as a father, for someone else as a mother, and or maybe as a loved one, as a sibling. Um, we're going to have people there who are not parents, but there's other things that the greatest gifts in life are what we can give to other people and using our time and our talents to do that. This event is about giving people the financial resources, the mindset, the clarity, the freedom to be able to have that impact, not just the income. Incredible. Scalingtofreedom.com, scalingtofreedom.com. We're out of time. Tune in again next Sunday night for another great edition of Mind Your Business right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. Have a successful week. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and be notified every single time a new video goes live. Don't miss out on any of the weekly interviews that I have with top business leaders, sometimes Fortune 500 executives. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications.